Lesson 9.4, graphing sine and cosine functions. Our essential question, how do you explore characteristics, stretch and shrink, translate and reflect graphs of sine and cosine functions? Standard 9.4, number four, graphing a horizontal translation. So let's go ahead and take a look at our graphs. When we are being asked to graph, the first thing we always have to find is our A, which I know is my five, our B, which I know is a one half, we finally have something inside the parentheses moving us, and that's going to be our h. My h is the value 3 pi, because remember, you're subtracting the h value. This is what is being subtracted. The minus stays there because it's the rule. So I'm subtracting a 3 pi. There is no plus or minus on the outside, which tells me that my k is a 0. So if I'm going to graph this, the first thing I need to find is my amplitude. And amplitude is the absolute value of a, which meant we are doing the absolute value of 5, which is 5. That means when I find my midline, I need to be able to go up 5 from wherever that coordinate point happens to be. So let's go ahead and find our period. My period is 2 pi all over the absolute value of b. So 2 pi over the absolute value of a 1 half. So this is 2 pi all over 1 half, which simplifies down to 4 pi. This means that my x-axis needs to be able to count up to 4 pi before it starts repeating again. It means we need to scale our x-intercept all over again. So there is me rescaling my x-intercept. Let's go ahead and look for our midline because we know things are moving. Our midline is y equals k. My k is 0. So my midline actually didn't move. My midline stayed exactly where it was at the 0. So here is my midline not moving. I'm still on the x-axis. Let's go ahead and look at our h. Our h is a 3 pi. We know that h tells us how much to move left and right. So my h tells me that I have a horizontal shift, and I have a horizontal shift to the right 3 pi. Now my k, which is a 0, K is our vertical. Well, it's zero, which when I had none. So there is no vertical shift. This horizontal shift is why what used to be at, at zero is going to not start until three pi. So everything is shifting. So what used to start at zero is now starting here. From here, which is three pi, because my vertical shift, I then need to be able to count to four which is why I now have this much space. So let's go ahead and find our five key points. This is a cosine function. Cosine and sine have very different formulas, so you need to make sure that you keep them separate. Cosine has two intercepts on the midline, and because our midline happens to be our x-axis, these are actually going to be x-intercepts this time. This is the formula for a standard cosine function. But because I am now moving horizontally, left and right, that means my x is being changed according to my h value. That means this x value needs to have the added h in there to make sure that we are taking into account the horizontal shift. So I've got my normal problem. I've got my b, and now I need to add my move of my h. So I end up having pi plus 3 pi, 0. So I end up having 4 pi, 0 to be my first x-intercept right here. My second x-intercept is normally this coordinate point, but we have an h value, which meant my x needs to show the shift over. So my x needs to have the added h to show the move to the left or the right. My b was a 1 half. So solving this part of the problem first, I end up getting 3 pi, and now I'm supposed to add the other 3 pi for the shift. So I end up having a 6 pi 0 as my second x-intercept. Those are my x-intercepts, and that's all that I have. So we need to make sure that our x-intercepts are represented all the way through the x-axis. And now I need to make sure I have all two maxes, because cosines have two max coordinate points. This is the coordinate point with the x value taking into account the shift. So I have 0 plus my 3 pi, and my a is 5. 
So my first max is at the coordinate point 3 pi 5. So here's 3 pi. Oop, I need to rescale my y's. So from the midline, I was supposed to be able to count up to 5, which meant the highest my I'm going to go up or down from this blue line are 5. So let's make sure we're counting by 5. So 5 will fit here. So 3 pi 5 is my first max. Let's find our second max. Here's my second max, taking into account the shift. My b is a 1 half. I'm adding my h of a 3 pi. My a is a 5. So this is 4 pi. So I have 4 pi plus the 3 pi, 5. So that meant my other max is at 7 pi 5, which is right here. My last and fifth and final point is my minimum. And this is the formula for the minimum with the horizontal shift taken into account. My b is a 1 half, my h is a 3 pi, my a was a 5. So this part of the fraction right here simplifies down to 2 pi. You had then the added 3 pi. So I end up having 5 pi negative 5 as my min. 5 pi, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. So the x-intercepts should cross the blue midline. They did. And then the other three points. So I start here. And I see that this is what I currently have. I need to make sure it repeats all the way through. So it's down at 5, up at... 5, down at 5, up at, well, I ran out of space. So we need to go down to 5, and then we need to go up to 5, down to 5, up to 5, down to 5, and then up, I ran out of space. So there is my cosine function. So now let's graph g of x equals 1 half sine, and in parentheses we have x minus pi halves. First, I need to identify my a. My a is a half. There is nothing written out front of here, so I know my b is a 1. Inside is my h. My h is you are subtracting the pi halves. So my h is a pi halves. There's nothing being added or subtracted out here, so my k is a 0. To graph this, the first thing we need to find is our amplitude. Amplitude is the absolute value of a. a is a 1 half. The absolute value of 1 half is a 1 half. So I know that my graph is going to be 1 half tall once I find the midline. Now let's go ahead and look for our period. Period is 2 pi all over the absolute value of b. The absolute value of b meant I'm doing the absolute value of 1. So this is 2 pi all over 1, which gave me 2 pi, which means that this will repeat every length of 2 pi. Now let's go ahead and look for our midline. Midline is y equals k, but my k is 0. So that meant that I did not move. My midline is still the x inter is still the x axis. So this is my midline. My h, which is pi halves, h tells us how much to move left and right. So that means that I have a horizontal shift and I have a horizontal shift to the right by pi halves, which meant what used to be at the zero is now over and starting here. So from here, I will then move a length of two pi. So I will fit. My k is a zero. k is what tells us how much we're going up and down. Since it's zero, that meant there was no vertical shift. Now from here, we need to find our five key points. And because this is a sine, sine and cosine have very different formulas. You gotta make sure that you're careful. Sine has three midline or x-intercepts. So we have three formulas we need to do. This formula takes into account our horizontal shift. So my h, which is a pi halves. So my first intercept is at pi halves zero, which is right here. My second intercept, this is the formula, and then you have to add h to take into account the horizontal shift. My b is a one. You're adding the h, which is a pi halves. Doing this part of the problem first, I get pi, and then I'm supposed to add the pi halves. So that means pi plus pi halves is a three pi halves. 
So this is my second intercept at 3 pi halves 0. I have one last third one. This is the formula taking into account our horizontal shift. My b is a 1, adding my h of a pi halves. So I have 2 pi plus pi halves, which gives me 5 pi halves 0 is my third intercept. So I need to make sure that this is represented all the way through. So there's all of my repeated intercepts. These are the only three points that should be on that blue midline. Now I have one max and one min to find. So my fourth point is a max. This is the formula taking into account the horizontal shift. My B is a one. My added H is an added pi halves and my A is a one half. This part of the formula gives me pi halves. Then I'm supposed to add another pi halves, and it's at the corner point one half. So this is pi one half is my max. So here's pi. I need to be able to get up to a half. So here's my up one half. My last point is my min. So this is the formula taking into account the horizontal shift. My b is a one. Added my h of a pi halves. My a is a one half. This part of the fraction is 3 pi halves. I'm supposed to then add the pi half. So my min is at the coordinate point 2 pi negative 1 half. So 2 pi negative 1 half is right here. So this is my period that is going to be repeated every single time. So I'm going to go down to a half, and then I will go up a half, and then I'm going down another half. So here is my sine function. So we're being asked to graph this problem. First, you need to identify your a, which is a 1, the b, which is also a 1. Our h is on the inside. Your h is a minus pi because the rule is supposed to be subtraction. So that meant you had to have been subtracting a negative pi. And my k, which is on the outside, is a negative 1. So I need to look at my amplitude. My amplitude is the absolute value of A, which meant I have the absolute value of 1, which is 1, which meant from wherever the midline happens to be, I need to make sure that I can go at least one high and one down. So let's go ahead and look at our period. My period is 2 pi all over the absolute value of B. So 2 pi all over the absolute value of B is the absolute value of 1, which is 1. So my period is 2 pi, which means I need to be able to repeat every 2 pi. But first I need to look at what's happening here. So first, what is my midline? Midline is the formula y equals k. My k is a negative 1. So I know that my midline starts right here at a negative 1, and I need to be able to go 1 up from that. So that means I start at the negative 1, and I need to be able to go down one more. So I need to make sure that my y's are rescaled. So here's me rescaling my y's. I don't know about the x's first. We gotta double check a few things. So first, my h. My h is a negative pi. h is your horizontal shift. So I do have a horizontal shift, and my horizontal shift is going to go to the left pi. An added pi is a left move. How much left? You're going left by a pi. So that meant I don't start here at zero, I actually start here instead at negative pi. From here, I then can repeat an entire two pi shift. Now my k, which is a negative one, k makes us go up and down. So this tells me that I do have a vertical shift and I actually have a vertical shift down one. So that meant that I am now right here at negative one is my new midline. From here, I can go up one and down one to get to my amplitudes like I'm supposed to. So now let's go ahead and find our five key points. Now I have an H and a K, which meant my five key points need to have H and K in them. So we are looking at sine. Your sine has three X intercepts, which are now midline intercepts because our midline was moved. So this is my first intercept. So I have 0 plus my h is a negative pi, 0 plus my k is a negative 1. So my first intercept is at negative pi negative 1. 
So I'm going to move negative pi, negative 1. Here is my first intercept. My second x-intercept, which is a midline intercept, the x needs to have the h shift in it, and the y needs to have the k shift in it. My b is a 1, my h is a negative pi, my k is a negative 1. This part of the problem gave me pi. I'm now supposed to be adding a negative pi, which meant I'm subtracting pi. Pi minus pi is 0. So 0, negative 1 is my second intercept, so 0, negative 1. I have a third and final intercept. Remember, the h needs to be with the x, and the k needs to be with the y. My b is a 1, my h is a negative pi, my k is a negative 1. This part of the fraction is 2 pi. I'm supposed to be subtracting a pi. 2 pi minus pi is pi. So my third and final intercept is pi negative 1. So pi negative 1. So here are my intercepts. We need to make sure we repeat them all the way through so that we can repeat our sine function. So these are the three intercepts that I had. Now I just need to find my max and my min. Make sure your x has the h involved and your k, your y has your k involved. My b is a 1. My h is a negative pi. My a is a 1. My k is a negative 1. This part of the fraction would give me pi halves. I'm then supposed to be subtracting a pi. Pi halves minus pi gives me a negative pi halves, 0. So my max is at negative pi halves, 0. And then my last and fifth point is my minimum, making sure the h goes with the x and the k goes with the y. b is your 1, h was a negative pi, my a was a 1, and my k was a negative 1. Doing this part of the fraction, I would get 3 pi halves, supposed to then minus pi, so 3 pi halves minus pi is a pi halves negative 2. So pi halves negative 2 is right there. So this is what I currently have for my sine function. Now from here, I know I'm supposed to go up to 0 and then down to 2. So up 0, down 2. Here is the right side. Supposed to go down two, and I actually ran out of space, so that's as far as it goes. So this is my sine function.